tempting. We're gonna go small game hunting, guys. So I'm gonna throw the. Uh... I decided to do hunt this. We were hunting this morning. We heard a. We heard a deer call, and then we. Um, yes, we hunted the backyard today. Uh, we saw. I saw a deer in the distance. Nothing came in though. So we're gonna go back out later tonight. But right now, we're over at Evansburg State Park, and we're gonna try to get a squirrel or a rabbit. Lyle just shot his first squirrel. No way. Now we're gonna hold on and make sure he's dead, okay? Yeah. Might wanna let it sit a minute, let it die, okay? In case it's still breathing. You see him there? Yeah, oh my God. I can't believe I did it. Yeah, he looks, he just looked like he relaxed. I always just let them go on their own because you don't wanna disturb them. He's got those last minute flinches in him. Nice shooting. <sighs> Yeah, buddy, proud of you. I was like, I was just ready to tell you. I'm like, when you have the shot and you're like, boom, I'm like, alrighty then. <laughs> Man, that thing had a huge kickback. A so Lyle's first squirrel. Nice headshot too, very good shot. Yeah. Hey, I'm good with one squirrel. Hey, that kind of <laughs> feels good. <laughs> Job, buddy. I am so happy. <laughs> All right, so we, he got a squirrel. I was not expecting. He got his first squirrel, and then we saw a whole bunch of horses. So it took a while to get the last photo. Nothing like trying to commemorate your first squirrel with a group of skittish horses. Right. Public hunting at its best, right there. We'll walk Man, a little I'm bit. Back here. Walk this a little bit falls. further and get into another trail here. And it's gonna probably be a catching moment, a shoot and cook. So we were, uh, yeah, this is going to be a shoot and cook. <laughs> Catch and cook, a shoot and cook. So that, we walked down the trail a little bit and I found the first stand of oaks that looked good. And I said, let's sit here for a couple minutes. And I got the collar out, which is this thing right here. You want to show them how to use that? Yep. So there's two things that you can use. You can put the squirrel legs in through there. We'll show them that later. Do the call. Yeah. And then you can hit this as like a squirrel nut crack. Yeah. So it sounds like a squirrel breaking and then you nuts. You could do this one that sounds like it's teeth. like teeth chipping. Yep. So that's what I did. I, I called twice and I heard it crashing through the leaves. And I said, there's a squirrel coming. And we just kept our heads on a swivel. And then I saw the squirrel in the distance. And I said, let's go. We got up and walked over to it. It was up in a tree and it jumped out went. of the tree and crossed the trail. And I said, I went to tell Lyle to take the shot. Here, let me see that. And before that, I shot it. <laughs> yeah, I said, uh, take Head the shot. Sh Boom. <laughs> yeah, so first shot hunting, first Very kill. Impressed. Awesome. All right. I'm happy. Let's see if we can get some more. All right, it's getting pretty warm out. We're going to go back and get this guy cleaned out here. Unloaded, action open, safe to go out on the road. All right, we made it back to the house. It's been a minute since I cleaned the squirrel, but we've got him hanging up here. Can I show him this thing yep. here? So this is the squirrel collar right here, and it also doubles to clean them. You put the legs through here, you pull them down, they lock right in. So this is this one should work. This is what I use for here.
I just use um, clippers. Is that high for her? Oh. I can't get rid of the elbow joint. No meat below that. A little, I got most of the bone out, a little bit left. And we have to let that, we have to let the tail air out a couple days somewhere safe because a fox will steal it. Now it's looking like a piece of meat. Got, we've got the hide off, we now have to gut them out. There he is. Big old squirrel. Man, that looks tasty. Now we gotta find the recipe and we're gonna cook this guy up. Now let's make these awesome squirrel pot pies. Step one, we're gonna put the squirrel in the crock pot, barely cover it with water. Uh, I salted and peppered the squirrel on both sides, covered it with water, and I'm gonna cook it in the crock pot, um, probably like three hours, I'd imagine. But what you want to happen he here is you want the meat to like fall off the bone. Uh, we'll check back in on this in a couple hours and I'll show you how this is coming along. Okay, there's two ways you can go about this. As you can see here, the squirrel has been cooking maybe an hour, so the meat's not falling off the bone yet, not even close. It's gonna need a few more hours. Uh, one way you can go about this is you can wait till the meat comes off the bone, pick that meat clear, use the reserves, the liquid, uh, to make your broth with, cooking the vegetables on the side, then adding it back into it but I like to cook the vegetables all along with it. It makes sorting it a little bit trickier when it comes to picking through the meat and the bone and all that junk, but I like to take the time to have the flavor soak into the meat and the broth. So I'm gonna add um, celery, some garlic, onion, and some carrot right now. I don't have potatoes and I do need to add potatoes, so this means I'm probably gonna have to cheat and get some like ready-made potato cubes so that I don't because I, I should be cooking them with this since I don't have that I'll probably either buy like the ready-to-go cubed John Evans or whatever they're called potatoes or I will um, like stove top them to catch them up in the cooking process but you'll see how this goes let me get this chopped and in here and uh, pick you back up after that So smash, I like to smash my garlic with the side of the knife like this to feel like it gets the juices out better. And we cut this down into little pieces. What we're doing basically is we're making a really good broth instead of buying a broth. That's one of the things I like about harvesting my own meat is, I, I don't know why, but I, I feel like I don't waste any of it. I want to get all the nutrients from it since I took its life. When you buy it in the store, I just don't feel the same way. I mean, I try to, but I just don't. So I know there's a lot of uh, nutrients that come into the broth. That's why, you know, people swear by like bone broth. Uh, I need a different knife for this, obviously. Um, but, you know, there, there's a lot of truth in that. Bone broth has so many of the nutrients um, in, in the... Uh, Soup. So we're kind of doing the same thing here, 
and we're going to reserve the uh, broth we're going to thicken the broth and that's actually going to become part of the filling that goes into the mini pot pies now my boys especially Lyle does the real doesn't want these vegetables in this that's the other reason I'm cooking them in there now because even if I have to get rid of the vegetables they've done their job a lot of the nutrients will be in the broth whether you can see the vegetables or not and I may even take some of the vegetables out of there after they're cooked with the broth and throw it in the blender we'll see we'll see how that looks and I, I may do that I may blend it up and then pour that blended <laughs> puree back in as the broth carrots are going in just realized I forgot the peas I got to get peas too so I need to go to the store and get peas and potatoes Let's cut up this onion Onions going in. That's it. Now put the lid back on and just let that all simmer in here. Ran out to the store, got some sweet peas. And I ended up getting shredded hash browns because we're doing these little mini squirrel pies. At least that's what I think we're going to end up doing. So these potatoes were ready to go. Um, and they're shredded, which I think will be easier than having um, to like cube the cubes smaller. So I'm going to put probably, let me open this up. I'm going to put half this bag in, I think. And then I'm going to save the other half because we don't need that much. But I want to have some in there at least for the flavor. And then after we take the meat off the bone, I may add the rest back in there if I want more potatoes in the final product. I don't want to disturb the squirrel meat too much because I don't want it really falling off the bone yet. I want to be able to pick it out of there. Put it in another container and then really make a mess out of it just to limit the amount of bones that end up in the pot but the soup itself starting to look pretty good and it's liquidy now and i'm going to um, cook a lot of that off and then i'll probably end up scooping some of the liquid because i certainly don't need all of that and making like a gravy from that and then i'll probably end up using the rest to make soup because this is good stock now so i'll probably uh throw another get two meals out of this uh, maybe I'll throw some venison in it and make it like a, a stew but we shall see we'll check back in in a few hours I got to get back to work all right so we just pulled the squirrel out of the crock pot this is not the most appetizing thing yet but that's the real world I'm gonna pull the meat off of it I'm gonna put it in this bowl um, I'm letting that cool down a little bit before I do that for the um, pie I'm just using Pillsbury mini pie crusts and um, it should let me get this adjusted. Should be able to just pull this out along the perforated lines and put these guys in the muffin pan. Like that. I'm gonna reserve all these extra pieces because I'm gonna put this over top when we go to bake this. Uh, but right now we got to bake the actual bowls that we will then stuff. I got to put a little extra down. got them all filled in I think that will be good enough and now I got to bake it at 400 degrees 
for about 13 minutes, the box says. So Got to let the oven warm up uh, another minute or so, and then I'll put those in. Meanwhile, I'll go back to picking off the bone. Okay, it just beeped at me, so this is going in. I'm going to set this for 13 minutes and check on it. Okay, I'm not showing you too much of this, but here's the, uh, the back part of the squirrel. And just like a deer, here's the backbone, and you get a pretty good loin right off of these. And look at that chunk, that's all meat. So I'm just gonna break that into pieces, add it with the rest. But that's really good quality meat right there. And then just like a deer, the underside is the tenderloin too. So there's a lot of meat around this section, don't skip that. I know some people just cut the legs off and leave the rest because they don't think it's worth it. But that's what's nice about using the crock pot method is you get all the meat. Just takes a little time. So we already have a full serving of meat here for one grown adult. So if you're trying to survive, get an idea of what you need and what you don't need. One squirrel is plenty of meat for one person. Okay, I think that's gonna do it. We got a pretty good sized bowl of meat off of that squirrel. So we're gonna set that aside and now we're going to uh, we got to make the gravy out of the broth next. This is our recipe for the uh, gravy. Half stick butter, one third cup of flour, two and a half cups of the broth, quarter teaspoon salt, quarter teaspoon pepper. Very, very quiet. of butter, close enough. Right in. Quarter teaspoon salt. Sorry, it's dark in here. Quarter teaspoon pepper. Okay, oven just went off. This look really good. Kind of balance these so I don't drop them. We've got pumpkins being carved here, so it's always messy anyway, but apologize for the mess. We're gonna take the meat, and we're gonna put a little bit of the meat in each little nugget here, bread. These might be messy. These, the tops of these did not come up as high as I thought they might. Yeah, putting some meat in each one, and I'm gonna still put I have to put the gravy in there yet, and then I've got to put a little bit more dough on top and bake them again. Mamma mia! Yeah, it looks good though, doesn't it? Oh my god, yeah! That looks so edible. Yeah, did you miss your squirrel? You haven't seen him in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so here's a little bit of the tricky part. We're going to put one third cup of flour in, but we're going to put it in slowly to thicken this up. And you kind of have to start um, constantly. Kind of, you really should sift it in there, but you know what? It's going to cook again in the in the oven, so little lumps are not really going to be noticeable at all. But Ideally, you would sift that through like a sieve and then, um, you know, put a little bit in at a time. But you know how we are. We got to get to the gym. We got 20 other things to do tonight. 
already thickening up really nice. You want to take the heat off of this actually. Keep stirring this a couple minutes. Okay, so we got the gravy, and I'm gonna put just enough in each hole to cover the bottom. And they got sea monkeys. Lyle's got a sea monkeys. Always distracted. <laughs> what? They're cute. You have to say they are cute. They, they are. Now this could get messy. You know that going in, right? Mm -hmm. That's going to be okay. We can eat them in a bowl. When you cook from scratch, you know it's going to be delicious. You just don't know what form it's going to be in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited, though. I don't care. I'm just excited. It's, it's going to be good. Yeah. I already tasted the gravy. It's delicious. Oh, it is? Mm -hmm. oh, and this is real gravy cooked in all the different veggies that mm. are now out of it. But the flavors in it, with none of the texture. Okay, a little bit more on these guys. You can already see the gravy's thickening up, so it is nice and thick when it hits the cooler air. All right, so we got that in there. Okay, so we might not have enough material to cover them all up. We definitely won't. So let me make one good one over here. I'll make one good one for you, right? Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Back in the oven. I'm just going to finish it maybe 10 minutes this time. I'm going to drop it to 350 since the bottom's already cooked. I'm going to go down to 350 degrees. Now I've got a big pot of extra gravy for another meal, and I've got a crock pot of the soup that I can now use as a base for something else. So, got lots of good ingredients from, or lots of good extra food from that squirrel recipe that we'll use for sure the next few days. So, what are these guys? They're called the sea monkeys. Okay, this one. They're actually really big. They grow very fast. And then there's over 100,000 in that other tank. There are sea monkeys in there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but they are definitely alive. And they're very cute. I think they had eggs. I'm not 100% sure, but... And why are they in here again? Oh, yeah, that's the breeding tank I just made. <laughs> All right, you want to put a lid on those guys or what? Um, I'll put the lid on, but not all the way because they breathe oxygen. And they okay. I snagged one out already. I wanted to make sure that at least one wasn't burned. Okay, we just pulled them out. Lyle's got his on his plate that he made. And we're going to let these guys cool down. I'm going to try oh, to pop good. them out. Oh, it's getting hot in my hand. Let me get this over here. Lyle started eating already. He couldn't wait. Like what? It? it smelled too good. Might be really hot. Good? Mm hmm He loves it. <laughs> I'm plating these yet. Let me get them out of here before they stick. I think if I did this again, maybe I would just do it all at one time. I don't know what I was thinking there. I would I would pour the um, I would put the pie crust, the mini pie crusts in the cupcake holder. I put the meat mix in there and then I put the little roofs on and bake it all together. But that's cooking. Mess stuff up all the time. Okay. Oh man, these look so good. Yeah, it's really delicious. <laughs> I think I busted that one. Okay. 100 over 50. Whew. Man, that is like the best. Yeah. I'm impressed. Ooh. 
All right, I gotta try this now. Really good. Oh man. Five out of one. No wait. So good. I'm at hundred out of fifty. Now, if you guys like vegetables, obviously you can put more of the vegetables in there. But I like it like this. Yeah. It's good I've, enough. I knew Lyle liked it this way, so this is why we made it. So if you need a kid-friendly recipe for squirrel, this is it. This is Lyle's first squirrel. So I wanted to make a delicious meal out of it and something that he would like. So I think we've accomplished that. You want to close out? You want to say goodbye to everybody? And we'll catch you See in you the guys. field. We'll catch you on the next hunting video. Oh, yeah. Boxcars. Here's Boxcar Hi. Jerry. Shout out to you. Shout out to Boxcar Jerry from Lyle. All right, peace, everybody. So this is the deer food that we set up here. I had to buy a new unit. We just hooked that onto it. And this thing, uh, we shoot uh, deer food twice a day here in Montgomery County. Uh, yeah, we shoot uh, six seconds in the morning, six seconds at night. And uh, yeah, that's what we do there. Here we're going to put some Take 69 out. We can pull that for you. Wow, I love the smell of that. Now we're going to just use a little paper clip with a cotton ball. That's what we're going to do here. Don't step on the back. Watch your feet. Don't even get up there. So what we're going to do with the scrape is we're going to keep marking the same spot and we're going to just put it right on this tree here. Yep. Put that in there. Let's go out here. Typically, I'd rub this out, but this is suburban hunting, and this is uh, the border of my property and my neighbor's property. So, not going to ruffle feathers. I'll let the deer rough it up, and well, I can blame it on them. Like <laughs> no, they're, they're a good relationship with our neighbors. We're going to keep it that way. Okay, now we're going to get into our stand. We've got to cross the creek here. Good.